Join the Community Wine and Spirits Monthly Wine Club, the Mutual Satisfaction Society. You'll receive three carefully selected bottles every month, complete with tasting notes and detailed information on each wine, all for $90. Join in the next 24 hours and get 20% off your first shipment. Want fancier wine? We got you. Join the Mutual Satisfaction Society Plus for extra satisfaction. $150 will get you three very special bottles. Let us take the trouble out of selecting great wines that you will love. Your first shipment is 20% off just for listening to View the Right Thing. Join the community today at www.communitywineandspirits.com or DM us at communityws. In the summer of 1972, a young girl, an unpopular tomboy, on the cusp of adolescence, has her life changed when her mortician father hires a new makeup artist to work alongside him. This young girl crushes on one of her teachers, experiences her first kiss with her best friend, a boy who is also unpopular, and comes to understand death in tragic ways. Wes and Alexis visit this 1991 coming-of-age tearjerker, My Girl, on View the Right Thing. Feel this way, my girl. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, welcome back to another episode of You the Right Thing. I'm Wes. And I'm Alexis. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Wes. How you doing? I'm great. Uh, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 we always dread this question about, about what we've got going on in our lives. Uh um, how's your how's your play going? Oh, it's going well. Yeah. We have a director. Can you say the name of the play or no? Um, yes, it's called "I'll Be With You Shortly." Oh, okay, I like that name. It's an original play okay. by one of the company members. Oh, cool. Yeah. And do we know where it's going to be at yet? It will be at the Loft Ensemble Theater in North Hollywood. I feel like I've been to the Loft have before. You? Nice. I think I saw a, an improv show there. Maybe. Oh, cool. It's like. It's like a like a little black box theater, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but surprisingly large number of seats. I feel like they have two different theaters. Oh, okay. there's one that's upstairs and one that's downstairs. I feel like one of them had like it felt like the seats were real steep, and I was like, oh, I bet that's so they could fit more. Yeah, more seats. In. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. So that's going well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we had our cornhole finals. <gasps> It happened? It happened. And how'd you do? We lost so hard. How did you do? I did not do well. (laughs) Because we didn't... Usually we like warm up in the first couple games and then we're doing well. But since it was the finals, um, if you you play the best out of three, Mm -hmm. but for the finals, if you lose the first two games, you're done. Oh. And so we were done really fast. Oh. We... We're done with the whole tournament in 15 minutes. Rest in peace. <laughs> did you stick around or did you just like bail? I was really tired, so you I bailed. But my, my teammate stayed and gave me the 411 about, oh my gosh, the team that we... Of course, we were number 16 out of 16 and we played the first... The first team, yeah. Yeah. And they won. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And they won the whole thing. The first seed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, did you try Daniel's method of not holding anything in your other hand? Yes. Yeah, and how did that go? Mm. No, no, no different. <laughs> no. no, we used a different board that was a little slippery. Oh, so the <clears throat> fix was in. Mm-hmm. I bet that I bet the team that won had been practicing on that board all week. They had their own bags. <gasps> they brought their own bags. I bet they were weighted differently <clears throat> than the rest. Probably of the bags. so. Fucking cheaters! <laughs> what was their name? Do you remember their name? Horn Coles. The Horn Col- uh-huh. Horn Coles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fucking Horn Coles. We know what's up. But they were so nice. Cheaters. Nice after cheaters. The, after the game, they went up to the people that run the Cornhole League, and they're like, the one guy was like, that's not fair. Like, why were we up against them? They they were destined to lose right away. Oh. <laughs> but, like, in a nice way. He yeah, wasn't yeah. like, they suck. But Well, that's how, that's how you keep people from, from pointing out that you're cheating, is that you, <laughs> you, you're really, really nice. You don't even think, you don't even want to think that they would cheat. Fucking cheaters. But it was fun. You're going down next year. Yeah. Are you going to do it again? 
Um, after the show is over, yeah. Yeah. So, you, so you're going to go back into the Cornhole League. Yeah. You're gonna get I good think it'll it. be fun. I met some really great people. Yeah. And one of the other teams that we played against before I left, they're like, wait, wait, we need your contact info. We want to see your show. Aw. They want to come see the play. That's really sweet. Yeah. That wasn't the Horn Coller? It was not the Horn Coles. Yeah. No. Yeah, see? <laughs> Fake niceness. <laughs> um, so, so how much does it cost to get into a league like that? Uh, with, uh, if you are an early registration, I think it's like 35. That's not bad. No. Yeah. It's not cool. bad at all. And did you do it with somebody or did you, did you yeah. just do it? Okay. I did it with my friend Jessica. Oh, okay. I think you mentioned that before. Yes. But I couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I want to put together? I want to put together a trivia team and do bar <gasps> trivia. I love trivia. So I gotta, love bar trivia. What we got to do is we got to get like people that know that have like really specific knowledge and mm-hmm. really specific areas. Like, like so many people are like movie knowledge or whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I got that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we need somebody who, <laughs> like what I don't got is geography or, or whatever, oh, you know, yeah. so, um, or history, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, I, I don't have that. <laughs> when I first moved here, I, um, was invited into a, a bar trivia team yeah. with one of my friends from high school yeah. and I made a bunch of friends yeah. through that. We were team Scotch and we, because you're all Scottish. No, because we all really liked scotch. <laughs> you're all you're all heavy drinkers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, you like scotch eggs? Right, um, yeah. Uh, well, let's let's think about putting together a team. And see if we can put it to, uh, together a dream team. I would love that. Yeah, it'd be fun. All right. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> so uh, instead of asking Alexis about, actually, I cannot ask you. Other than the one we just watched mm-hmm. together. Yes. What trailers have you seen recently? I saw the new, I don't know if it's a trailer or more just, well, I'll just call it a trailer. It was the new trailer for the Bob Dylan movie okay. that Timothy Chalamet is oh, he's starring Bob Dylan? in. Yeah. He's got the good look. I know. It's funny. This morning, Jeff goes, did you see the new uh, Bob Dylan movie trailer? No. He's like, I sent it to you. You should watch it. He's like, who do you think is playing Bob Dylan? You can guess in three. And I was like, Shia LaBeouf? He's like, try again. I go, Timothy Chalamet. He's like, yep. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf was a good guess. I know, right? Uh, and Timothy is singing. So they're not overdubbing with Bob Dylan. Yeah, Dil- but I mean, who, it's doesn't not hard. Do, who doesn't do Bob Dylan? It, it's not hard. It's, it's not, not hard. It's not hard. That's what I'm saying. But I'm I'm wondering if they'll do any of the the songs from Lay Lady Lay album. Yeah. That is my favorite Bob Dylan voice. You know what I Because re- it's more like trying to sing and not trying to sound like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I no hate to Bob Dylan. I really enjoy Bob Dylan, and but he's still alive. Yeah. So I want the movie to end with him present day or closer to present day, and him play himself. Ooh. We, that should happen <gasps> more often. Ray should have been in Ray. Oh. Hmm. I feel that. I don't know if Bob would want to. Like, he was nominated for um, one of those awards. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Grammy, Emmy, Oscar, Tony. Bigger. Bigger than the Oscar? Yes. The Nobel Prize. Yes. For what? Peace Um, peace songs? Yeah, something like that. Folky peace songs? Yeah. Yeah. And he refused to pick up the award he's like i don't want to go bob dylan's <laughs> greatest uh uh what's the word i'm looking for contribution to society is the inspiration for lisa simpson singing this the union worker strike song on the simpsons what i'm joking that's not his <laughs> contribution but it is a pretty great con- <laughs> contrib- without bob dylan we wouldn't have had that oh really yeah oh you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea. There's a famous early, one of the earlier seasons episodes where um, the workers go on strike and, and Homer oh. becomes like the, the union leader. Oh. And Lisa sings a really great song outside the picket line about the union workers striking. Huh. Yeah. I had to, I was not allowed to watch The Simpsons as a kid because my mom didn't like how Bart Simpson spoke to his parents. You're an adult now, though. Uh, for sure. And you know there's like 40 seasons of it on <laughs> Disney+. Plus. <laughs> this is true, but I didn't like build the following that other We should watch some Simpsons did. together. Okay. I'll show you some of my favorite episodes. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, I've have watched seen, have a the lot of one? them. No. <gasps> it's the Music Man. 
but but it's it's like Phil Hartman's in it. It's like a great cat. I mean, it's a Simpsons cast, and back when yeah. Phil Hartman was alive. And it's it's a musical episode. I think it's one of the first musical episodes they did, oh. and I think they won some awards for it. And and it's it's the Music Man, but on the Simpsons. It's freaking great. <laughs> it's awesome. It's one of the best episodes. Conan O'Brien wrote it, I think. Oh wow! Yeah, he was a writer on the show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's some there's some really really great and obviously obviously the Treehouse of Horror episodes because those are all like based on horror movies and um like actual they're all parodies of actual oh. movies and um twilight zone episodes and that's uh, great it's really great oh wow yeah okay let's watch some simpsons together yeah <laughs> right uh so we we watched uh another trailer mm-hmm. it was called his three daughters um with carrie coon um elizabeth olsen and natasha leone yeah and it looks really good. It does. Um, was that an A24 film? It felt like it. Yeah. I don't know if it was. It definitely had A24 vibes, but yeah. maybe not. That was Netflix, so probably not. <gasps> oh, right, right, right. It has that, like, indie vibe to it. Yeah. It did. That, that, like, <laughs> you... s- 70s color. Like <laughs> Your face was like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Well, remember, we because I saw the, the vibe to it just yeah. from the thumbnail... And I was like, "Oh, this looks like something you're going to want to see." <laughs> and I clicked it. Accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 figuring you out. Mm-hmm. I'm getting your number. <clears throat> so yeah, we got. It. it looks good. It looks good. It's, so it's about um, three daughters coming home to sort of help their ailing father who's dying mm-hmm. um, in his last days, and the you know they're all different personalities and they're fighting and um, and mm-hmm. it's uh, looks very familiar. Um, just having gone through the same thing Mm -hmm. um and you know it's really easy to like pick at each other for little things yeah when you're just so stressed out oh yeah um like like there's a moment in the trailer where she's like i bet she doesn't even wash her dishes yeah you know after (laughs) after the after she's made dinner for the sister yeah um and it's like things like that i was my first thought was like it's just so easy to just hyper fixate on those little things Mm -hmm. and let that be the thing that like starts a you know, a, a war where you just stop speaking to each other, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. Cause grief manifests in people differently. Yeah. But often in anger. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. <clears throat> Cause you're just so angry about everything. Yeah. I, I got a, I got really angry at, um, I kept it to myself. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. I've talked about it with Desi and probably my parents, but, um, I got really angry because everybody wants to help mm-hmm. and everybody has a suggestion. Has your dad tried this? Has your dad done this? Mm-hmm. Oh, your dad should try this. Oh, I saw this, this miracle cure. Mm. And, and I'm just like, I just need people to leave me alone. Like, yeah. we're doing everything we can. You have to trust that. And and so I just, anytime somebody tried to help, I got so, I would seethe on the inside. I, yeah. I was just angry all the time. Mm. It's hard. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. I get it. So my dad said a lot of, in the last year. <laughs> it is what it is. Because <laughs> I really do, you know? Yeah. So... Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, it's actually a great segue. Yeah, you want to talk more about Grief. more death? <laughs> let's talk about more death. Uh, yeah, let's talk about my girl. Yeah. Um. So what's 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 my girl about? My girl. Um, it's about a girl named Veda who is obsessed with death, and her mother is dead, and her father runs a funeral parlor. So when Veda's father hires Shelley, a makeup expert, and begins to fall in love. Veda is outraged and does everything in her power to split them up. That's interesting because that's not really how I would view the plot of this film, but it definitely nope. is what happens in the yeah. film. So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. But that's not how I would describe it to somebody. No, not at all. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Hmm. So Alexis, did you like this movie? I love this movie. I kind of love it too, actually. <laughs> See? <laughs> well, but I, I yeah. knew I, I, but I liked this when I was younger. Yeah. I, I wasn't that. I was, I was, I think there's some of these movies that we draw that I'm like I've seen a bunch or um, I'm just done with them and I think that's that's a lot of movies for me Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny our friend Steve Mm -hmm. really into movies was on this podcast for a long time Um, and he remembers quotes and bits from movies and he'll say stuff and he's like what movie is that and I'm like I don't (laughs) fucking know I don't retain any of this information I retain information about the making of them and the feel of them and like meaningful deep stuff mm-hmm. but like all the superfluous 
like lines and stuff. I don't have I don't have brain space for it, so I, mm. I delete it so I can put a new movie in there. <laughs> um, and and so so I see these things get pulled, and I'm just sort of like, okay, I've done I've done this, so I'm like, whatever, yeah. I'm, uh, grumble grumble. <laughs> um, but no, I, I I loved this movie when I was younger, and I love this movie now. Yeah, um, yeah, it's great. I. Yes. Gosh, I just love it. <laughs> yes. I feel like I was so obsessed with it as a kid, and I I was wondering, you know, I haven't seen this movie in well over a decade. Does it hold up? Yeah. Yeah. And while watching it, I'm realizing how much of this movie kind of shaped who I am as a person. Oh, wow. Which is really interesting. Yeah. You know, I would recommend people who loved a movie when they were a child and they haven't watched it in a long time, mm-hmm. watch it again and see... That's why you became a mortician. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She didn't do that. Well. No. <laughs> um, yeah. No. It's it it it's um I think for artists too it's like a really um you know it's a coming of age story mm-hmm. but it's also like you know watching an artist like figure out who they are and what what art actually means to them because she starts out with a poem about ice cream and yeah. ends the poem about her grief mm-hmm. um uh and yeah. so and so as an artist i think it's like really fulfilling to like watch somebody go through that journey oh yeah um even if it's narrative and fake right but. it's amazing the transformation she made over just one summer yeah so i can see i can see how this is like oh this is something that should help shape you because mm-hmm. you're an artist and yeah. a girl mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah um i get it yeah mm. all right so tell me about your some of your notes um <laughs> one of the first things i wrote was oh my god brian grazer he was oh, one yeah. of the producers yeah and he has done tons of ron howard stuff for yeah. sure yeah i was excited about ron Gra- uh, brian grazer <laughs> um Brian, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, I wrote silly notes. Um, Love it. Like, she was born jaundiced. I was born jaundiced, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There was, um, the I think, one of the um, working titles or, or titles they considered had jaundice in the... For real? Yeah. They didn't know what to call this movie. There was, like, I think... Um, I think Morning Glory was another one, but it was Morning as in like like oh. M O U R N Morning Glory. Ew. Um they they uh they put it to the people that worked uh at the at the production company and they offered like a uh, like a five hundred dollar or two hundred dollar prize or whatever who could come up with the title. And wow. they ended up with my girl. Good. Yeah. Perfect title. Yeah, it was great. And the song goes along with it. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, what did I write? Uh, I thought it was hilarious that she would have the neighborhood kids pay her so that she could show them dead people, but then uses her grandma, who is in mental decline, as, like, one of the dead people who wasn't entirely dead yet. Yeah. Genius. Like a a little businesswoman at work. Right? So clever. Yeah. Um, but... Shelley's camper. Yeah. A, a camper? RV. I mean, RV. Call it, it referred to it as an RV. Maybe a camper also. I don't yes. know. Yes. I love that camper so much, or that RV. It's big inside. It's huge. Yeah. It's very tall. I love when she kicks the table out so they can dance yes. with her foot. I know. It was so cute. Um. Oh, when they're doing the... Veda, Veda, Bobeda, Banana, Fana, Fofeda. That was so popular when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's do Mitch. Or, or <laughs> Right? Or Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Banana, Fana, Fo... Yes. It just... I hadn't thought about that little... Whatever that is. Song game. The name game. It's the name game? The name game. <gasps> I never really knew the name of it. There's a really great... American Horror Story episode okay. season two, where they play the name game record in the asylum. Oh, and uh, it's um, what's her name? The super like famous. Oh my god, her name is escaping me. Is she on? Yeah, she's um, and she's Sarah she's, Paulson. No, 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 no. Okay. She's like older. Um, 
Jessica Lang. Jessica Lang. Mm-hmm. She she does the name game thing, and it's like it's like a really cool like it's almost surreal how how they go about it. Hmm. And I can't remember if maybe it's because they've been abused at that point, like maybe they, she's been shocked or something. Oh, um, but it's like maybe real maybe not real I don't remember it that well but I remember the scene just really sticking in my brain and remember her performance was really good oh so, wow yeah I didn't realize it was the name game yeah I it just took me back to being a little kid <laughs> uh, I noticed you mentioned the whole like they're they're going home or someone wants to go home why it's not dinner time yet oh yeah and that totally resonated with you oh because we had that conversation yes yeah, about how, especially in the summertime, it was like, get out of the house. And you just get on your bike and you go to a friend's and you yeah. just ride around. And there's like that moment where they go to the doctor and then they go see the teacher and, you know. Yeah. There was a lot of freedom. I mean, the, this took place in 1972. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I wasn't allowed to leave my block. Yeah. Well, when I was a kid. Well, and there was, the, there was a moment in the movie where Macaulay Culkin's character, Thomas J., says... Um, I'm, you know I'm not allowed by myself after dark. Mm-hmm. Implying that other kids are allowed right. by themselves after dark. So yeah. It gives you an idea. <laughs> right? I mean, they were just going around town. Yeah. No one... Th- there were no cell phones. There there were no... There was nothing. It was oh, just man. like you just trust. We had no cell phones when I was a kid. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> it was aw- I mean, of course, when you're a kid, you like want to be on- check out a car phone. Yeah. But like... It was, it was, I think, I think so fondly about not having access all it, the time. It was great. I was just remarking about that with my uh, fellow producer yeah. yesterday. It's like, wasn't it so great when we weren't, like, no one could reach us. You just, you leave the house and no one can reach you until you get home and you have this freedom. Yeah. And now. And then if, if you don't have a quarter, then you have to call collect. Yes. 1-800-C-O-L-L-E-C-T. Hi, mom. It's me. I'm at school. Come back. Yep. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. The, don't answer this. Don't right? accept the call. <laughs> it's like that commercial from Forever Go. Yeah. It's Bob. We ought a baby. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bob. They had a baby. It's a boy. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Right. Oh, it's just good times. <laughs> um, so interesting how how much of a hypochondriac Veda is. And I feel yeah. like it's because she doesn't really understand death. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And also, she's 11? There's no way that she was 11. She looked like such a little girl. What year was this? Well, it came out in 91. In 91. So it was shot at 90. Right. Um, so she would have been 10. Right. Because she was, she was born in, in 80. 80. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she would have been almost 11. Okay. She just looked so much it's like that. Thomas J. definitely looked younger. Yeah. Yeah. They just, she just looked like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Alexis's face. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, the we talked about the hippie dude in the writing class. Oh, yeah. I always thought he was so great. I yeah. was like, that, he seems like a friendly dude. I would be his friend. And then, of course, I grew up, like, t- talking about myself. I was like, I'm a tree hugger. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Peace, love, yeah. He would have been, that, he would have been whatever, whatever his girlfriend's name was. Yes. Yeah. He yes. Her. <laughs> Who looked like Kristen Bell. Totally. She looked, it was weird. I know. I, I looked her up. I was like, is she related to Kristen Bell? Or not as far as I can tell. No. No. Oh. Um, does Dan Aykroyd actually play the tuba? He doesn't. So <gasps> they brought in a coach to teach him how to do it. And then they used a pre-recorded okay. audio for the for the tuba noise. I mean, he he's a really talented musician. Yeah. Um, he plays the mouth harp. Mm. <laughs> the harmonica. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, he's, he's a blues musician. Yes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, he plays he plays harmonica, but I don't know that he plays anything else. Yeah. But definitely not. The tuba's not the, a bit different. Definitely not the tuba. Yeah. He he faked it very well. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that when, when we were going into the movie, they have the movie poster up on the screen and... and they have a picture of, you know, the girl. Mm-hmm. And then they have Jamie Lee Curtis on, on in a little box. And then they had Dan Aykroyd in a little box. And he's playing the tuba in the, on the poster. And I'm like, why? That, it's, it of all the things. Right. <laughs> of all the things that he does, that just didn't... It's not that important. Mm-mm. No. I mean, but it is cute that he plays the tuba for his mom. Yeah. Although that... I was un... 
clear. I'm assuming that was his mother. Yeah. And I was unclear about whether that was his wife's mother or his. I'm assuming it was his. Hmm. Um, I wish it was the wife's. That's what I... So his brother never really pays attention to her. Not much. I mean, he, he sits on the other side of her at dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't see the brother. Like, it's not the brother's responsibility to watch her when there's a, a funeral going on. Right. Um, but he sings um, Mad About Harry, which is his name, to her. So it seems like it would hmm. be maybe there's more of a familiar connection with him, but okay. maybe not. I, I would like the idea, though, that if I was writing this, mm-hmm. I would make sure that she was the Veda's maternal grandmother. Yeah. And this idea that, like, even though she's not his mom, he's still taking care of her. Yes. Um, just to clear that up, I yeah. looked on IMDb, and she is listed as Grandmu Sultanfuss. So, yeah. So she has to be. <clears throat> um, yes. I did notice that she also had a wedding cake topper next to her bed. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cute and, like, yeah. a nice little touch. And maybe... Um, attests to her um, I suspect it was maybe Harry's wedding topper and maybe that was a reference to her being so devoted to her daughter-in-law and granddaughter Harry's not married he's a womanizer no Harry Harry Sultan Fuss is the main character isn't he? oh I'm sorry <laughs> I, I was suddenly thinking yeah. of, of uh, um, the brother yep you know isn't, isn't Harry yeah, Harry You're is right. Harry is in our friend's character. Yep, sorry. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's hers, but yeah, it, it seemed a little too clean and new to be that old. That's fair. So. <clears throat> yeah, hmm. but I did notice it. It was a nice touch. Yeah, it really was the oh, the production design. The it was. I think it was really well executed. Oh yeah, I felt like I was in that world. Well, you want to hear something really cool production yes, design-wise for this film? Mm-hmm. The Weeping Willow tree is not actually a Weeping Willow. <gasps> what? It's a different kind of tree. And they had to basically strip a different tree to... Um, and then they put all of those those um, Weeping Willow strands on there by themselves by hand. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it looks legit. It, it looks, totally does. When I was in... Um, I lived in Utah. We had a Weeping Willow tree. Mm-hmm. I think it was like something my mom had always wanted. Always mm-hmm. wanted a Weeping Willow tree. And so we had one in our front yard and uh, um, cool little tree. Um, those those strands that the mm-hmm. leaves grow on that hang down, you can pull those off and you whip each other with them and it hurts. <laughs> yeah. Again, going oh, no. back to my summers. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Yeah, they removed mm. all the branches off another tree and replaced them with fake willow tree branches. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Crazy, I, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess a weeping willow itself isn't really much of a climbing tree. Oh, yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it looked like a, we, a weeping willow. Oh, it did. Okay. Oh, yeah. We climbed the tree in the front yard, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ugh. There's something wonderful about climbing a tree. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was never good cli- at it. No? <laughs> no? We had a magnolia tree in my front yard, and that's where I learned how to climb trees. Yeah. And it's just... I don't know. I'm a tree hugger. <laughs> I, I have, I have, I was born with bad genetics. So, you know, Aww. like, you know, wasn't a, I wasn't like a super like upper body strength kind of kid. And yeah. Asthma and, you know, all that Aww. jazz. So I used to have upper body strength, <laughs> but you don't anymore. No. <laughs> now I have shoulder problems. Yeah. Getting older is great. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very sweet when they went to go fishing. <clears throat> When um, Veda and Thomas J go fishing and she's like, don't kill it. She's very, very focused on death. And he asks, she asks him if he got away and he lies to her and says, yes. Yeah. Even though the fish clearly died. And I have a feeling the fish, both fish represent something with them. But, and I want to, I want to address that. But Mm -hmm. um, I just remembered something about. Justin, the guy that you were talking about that you really liked in the in the yes. class, mm-hmm. I forgot. They asked a different famous actor to play that role. What? And he couldn't because his schedule on In Living Color wouldn't allow him. Jim Carrey? Yep. Oh. 
Oh, I don't think I would weird, have wanted right? him in that role. I, I could, I mean, if he was like hamming it up like Ace Ventura, it wouldn't be, wouldn't have been good. But yeah. I think if he toned it down and did it, played it more like this guy. Yeah, wow. I think you I, know they they do have similarities in yeah. look. Yeah. Wow. Why did that just give me chills? That's weird. I don't know. You're a weird Jim Carrey fan. <laughs> I I do like Jim Carrey. <laughs> I think he's funny. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've been thinking about Jim Carrey a lot lately. Um, and oh, I saw a thing where it was like. The Bachelorette Party is like a TikTok. It was like the Bachelorette Party, but we're all we're, we're all supposed to dress as Jim Carrey characters. And so they're all, <laughs> but they every single one of them like essentially makes like the same face or head movement or whatever when they come out the door. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Jim Carrey has one note and way over the top, and he did the same thing for a long time, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it makes me like like those movies less. <laughs> like, oh no! Thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, he he had a he had. A vibe until the majestic was that the movie? Uh, he did. Um, he did Tr- Truman Show. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't. Was he? Was the majestic the one with, about see, the movie theater? I didn't see the majestic. Oh, it was like to me, it was his first serious role, mm-hmm. and not once bitten. I don't know what that is. <gasps> I'm sorry. Add it to the bucket. Okay. Remind me after the episode. We'll add it to the bucket. Bitten. Writing it down. It's terrible. It's, terrible. it's early Jim Carrey's, but I think it's pre living color. Oh. Oh. Wasn't he in Earth Girls Are Easy? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like an alien or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wasn't that before in living color? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was good at that. Okay. Good. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess it's subjective. I don't know. I don't know if that's... Uh. Anyways. Um, uh, oh, the fish. Oh, want, yes. Oh, sorry. Do we want... Did you want to harp on Jim Carrey a little more? No. No, go ahead. Talk fan, fangirl over Jim Carrey a little bit longer? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, so I think... So she gets a fish later in the film <clears throat> that's alive. Oh, that's right. And I sort of think the fish represents her friends because... She tells the fish after she drops it, I'll never get it. I won't get another fish. And I think the mm. idea being that the first fish, Thomas J, dies and the second fish is Judy at the end of the film. Yeah. And that she does get another friend, even though. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't think she ever will. She'll never love again, basically. Because she loses her love and her best friend all on the same day. Yes. So. That. What a heavy. I'm imagining that. It was like the final month of the summer that mm-hmm. all of this happened. Yeah. The, you know, Thomas J passing and her getting her period. Yeah. Like those are two. Yeah. She's she, whirlwind, <sighs> whirlwind of a summer. Getting a period for the first time is so confusing and so <laughs> upsetting. And there are all these emotions and you don't understand and you're, you have cramps and every, it's just like awful. And she has all these hormones racing through her body and of course you know she gets her first kiss from her best friend and then he dies yeah that is a lot and her father finds a new wife yeah side note they're they get engaged after knowing each other for like how long they she started at the beginning of the summer and they plan to get married by the end of the summer Mm -hmm. that's ridiculous Uh, you know people are crazy I, Love I, makes you do crazy things. I guess. <laughs> Let me ask you about <clears throat> um, Veda's journey. Yeah. Do you think at the end of the film that she feels responsible for Thomas J's death? No. I wonder if she does. Really? But but she's come to terms with it. Like accepts that she feels responsible for it and that that's just how she's... So she feels responsible for her mother's death, which yeah, is a thing she throughout does. the film. Did I kill my mother? And at near the end of the film, she sees Thomas J's mom, and Thomas J says he had this on him and gives her the mood ring. So now she knows he went back for the mm. ring. Yeah. Had he not gone back for the ring, he wouldn't have died. Right. So does that leave Veda with similar feelings to her mother? And is she accepting of this? Like, maybe even immediately because she says, my mom will take care of him. Yeah. Like, is she, has she, like, come to terms with what death is and that... Yeah, you might feel responsible for things, but mm. it, it just is what, you know, again, it is what it is. And maybe, wow. maybe the answer is no. I'm just posing that question as a, as a, as a thought thing. Maybe there, maybe it doesn't have to be answered, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But, but that thought did cross my mind. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And the fact that her best friend 
His funeral is in her house. Yeah. That's heavy. Well, when they were bringing the body on the stretcher Mm -hmm. and the dad was there pushing it in, and I thought, how insane must it be to work on a child in your, you know. um, I also noticed the way she hugged the mom, Mm -hmm. Thomas J's mom at the end, and the way the mom touched her and like reached out for her face as she sort of backed away. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, that mom is struggling and needing contact with the child. Absolutely. Well, she even mentions that sometimes she can't even get out of bed. Yeah. And she asks her to come visit her. Yeah. Yeah. Because she needs a child in her life. Yeah. How devastating. Yeah. Oh, God. What a bummer of a movie. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was great. But it's a beautiful movie. It is beautiful. Mm. Um, I noticed around the time when she, um, when Veda finds out that uh, Thomas J has died, and she covers her ears and starts singing the do I diddy diddy dum diddy do. Mm-hmm. She did the ex- she started singing the exact same song when she got accidentally locked in the basement, and and covered her ears. And she sings the song when um, she is at the bottom of the stairs of the basement, and she knows her dad's working on a dead body. She huh. sings it with the assistant. Yeah, so it it must be some like happy song for her. I think it's I think it's like I can't deal with death, right? Like they're working on a on a dead body of his high school teacher. Yeah. Um and then she's trapped down there with a body and then Thomas J. So I think it's just how she deals with death. Mm. And yeah, probably it's it's a upbeat happy song. Yeah. I I hadn't noticed that previously that she yeah. sang the same song yeah. multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm. Poor sweet thing. <clears throat> um I was surprised that she was, for the first time, getting receiving a conversation about the birds and the bees and menstruation oh, yeah. and all that at 11 and a half. Yeah, I was going to say, that that's the, an, another piece of that whole thing you're talking about where it's like so tra- traumatic and, yeah. and like she also didn't know it was coming. Right. I think a lot of kids nowadays are getting a, an education earlier mm-hmm. um, and so they know what's going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but, and it's part of school system, and yeah. it probably wasn't. Oh yeah, no, back absolutely then. not. Well, I don't know. They did those like, "You're changing bodies," you know. <laughs> but this was seventy-two. Yeah, that's true. Was that a? I'm sure. I think that was probably a thing. I mean, those are those are old videos. Yeah, I guess so. Little Jimmy notices <laughs> something's happening. <laughs> like I, I was also a very precocious child, but I asked to know about everything sure. when I was four. Oh, okay. And my mom was like, uh, what do you want to know? And I was like, everything. How clinical can we make this? <laughs> Let's, yeah, tell. I just want to know. And my mom told me everything, and I just, like, stopped. and was like, huh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else um, you got there? Uh, the hair poster on Veda's wall, I never... I don't know if I noticed it or maybe it just stuck in my brain mm. because that is my favorite musical. Oh. And my grandparents have the original record. Yeah. And they gave it to me because I used to open up their huge record player console and play that record on repeat. And I would pause it like, you know, this was before we had Google that could tell us what all the lyrics were. And I would write out the lyrics to all the songs yeah and like you know lift the needle right 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 put the needle back down right 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 um when was the first time you saw hair saw it saw hair yeah the first time i saw it was as an adult yeah i was gonna say yeah. surely you didn't see it as a kid no no i did not see that as a kid but i listened to the music yeah. i loved the music i know all the songs yeah um my grandparents were at like Broadway show when it came out. Oh, okay. And brought two of their like very conservative friends with them. Oh. And my noni and papa were having a blast and the, their friends were just appalled that naked people were walking past them up to the stage. No wonder you were a tree hugger. <laughs> these, these hippie parents or grandparents. <laughs> They're surprisingly not hippies. I don't know. They're just very open minded. <laughs> um I wonder if Veda really went her whole life not asking about her mom. Hmm. 
Well, I mean, the dad is pretty closed off and not very approachable. Mm-hmm. And he does seem to just, like, brush things off and not pay that much attention mm-hmm. when she's asking for something. Yeah. Like, when she asks him for money, he just, he's not even, he's not even in the room. Right. You know? And I wonder, <clears throat> so, when um, Harry and Shelley go to the bingo, go to play bingo, mm-hmm. he talks about how he has a very particular way that he likes to play bingo. Yeah. And it's not necessarily to get more points, but it follows this numerical rule. Yeah. Now, um, Dan Aykroyd is on the spectrum. So do you think this guy's on the spectrum? I do. Yeah, I maybe. wonder because uh, that would not have been, like, they didn't really know what no. being on the spectrum was back then. No. Not certainly um, what we know now. Right. And he was just quirky. He yeah. had his quirks. Yeah. Um, so I kind of wonder if that was why he was the way he was. Dan, let us know. Yeah. Let us know. Do you have the inside scoop <laughs> about this movie? Yeah. Well, I meant Dan Aykroyd, but yeah. yeah. He, he would have the inside scoop on this movie, I would think. Yeah. That's <laughs> who I was talking to. <laughs> you, you said, do you have the inside scoop? And I'm like, yeah, of well, course he has the inside scoop. Right. Right. <laughs> But he didn't write it. Like oh, maybe, yeah. But you know, actors, that make, was, actors yeah. make like, oh, this is the history of my character. Yeah, and, you know, you, you, yeah. I don't need to explain being an actor to you, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Tell me, how does it work? But I mean, you know, he probably, especially if he's on the spectrum, he probably, yeah. he probably worked that in. Yeah, yeah. And it, it all worked really well. Yeah. Mm. Um, I just the part. So many parts of this movie are heartbreaking but when she goes downstairs during thomas jay's funeral mm-hmm. and he, he doesn't have his glasses he can't see without his glasses yeah. like that those lines are forever burned into my my memory yeah and i was preparing myself for it i'm like oh it's it's gonna happen i'm fine i'm fine i am not fine <laughs> and just trying not to audibly sob <laughs> I think I think in that scene the line that gets me more mm-hmm. is she asks him if he wants to go out and yeah. ride bikes. Is that what she said? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Ride bikes or climb it's the like, tree. It's like yeah, let's let's get you can get up from this. Yeah, yeah. I I totally understand that because looking at a dead body, you're like, are they? Maybe they just could open their eyes. <clears throat> I, I have dreams like that. Yeah, I have dreams where. It's just after my dad's been taken away, mm. um, and they, there's a phone call, and it's like, "Oh, we made a mistake," and he comes home. Oh, good dreams. Yeah, I, I used to hate them, but they're good dreams now. Yeah, because it's like for, you know, I know the dreams are like seconds or whatever, but in your, you know, when you wake up, you're like, "Oh, I spent all night dreaming about this." Yeah, and it's like I spent the night with hanging out with my dad. Oh, that's so, lovely. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of nice now. It is beautiful. Yeah, I used to hate it. I'm sure because I'd wake up and not know if it was real. I could have a, you know, a, a few moments of like having to relearn that my dad was dead again, which yeah. is hard. It's, it's really hard. Yeah, totally. But now I'm sort of like, oh, I kind of hope I have one of those dreams. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I, when I was four, my great grandfather passed away mm-hmm. and I remember going to the funeral and I touched him Yeah. and it is very... It's haunting oh, I bet. to touch a dead body Yeah, after it's been embalmed and oh, all that. Oh, I'm sure. It's like waxy, right? It felt like plastic. Yeah. Which I exclaimed oh, no. in the church. I'm like, he's all plasticky. <laughs> oh, no. And someone walked by and like swatted, swatted my bottom. <laughs> oh, no. Like, Don't do that. I'm, what? It's true. But You're so that had to have felt... I was. I was a really precocious <laughs> little kid. Um, but... I wonder if they, like, if they explained that to uh, Anna Klumski, like, mm. that it's going to, fe- he would feel different. Yeah, I don't know. Because that would, I don't know, it, like, makes me think, oh, well, that would make her want to, like, come on, get up. What, what You don't feel right. Yeah. Like, the body just feels different. I don't recommend going and touching dead bodies. It's haunting. Um, but... Like I, like some of the artwork in her room, like some of the, like, I swear one of the that that picture that was next to her bedroom door, yeah, I swear that was a, a big eyes. It's picture. very Tim Burtony, totally. Yeah. Um, 
did you notice mm. that when her new gal friend came and like Judy check Judy thank yeah. you um throughout the whole movie Veda is wearing pants mm-hmm. she wears something different at the end and uh, yeah yeah she goes to the the poetry class mm-hmm. and is wearing a dress mm-hmm. and still riding around on her bike but in a dress I found that so interesting that like I, she I think go ahead oh, I'm sorry you want do you, uh, did I cut you off go ahead I think she assimilates. Mm -hmm. So she is around the dead bodies, and so she has an illness that's going to kill her. Mm -hmm. She's around Thomas J., who's her only friend, so she wears boy clothes and climbs trees and stuff. And then her new friend is Judy, who wears... She wasn't actually wearing a dress at the end, but is a girl, a very girly girl. Um, And um, so now she's wearing dresses like a girl. I say like a girl, like a girl of that era. Yes. It was interesting. That's right. She does assimilate yeah. to who she hangs around. And she even she even sort of flirts with that with Shelley, um, mm-hmm. with the makeup. Yeah. You know? And and I think there's that, that sort of, there is a thing there where, you know, her childhood is ending and she's like, you know, there's, that theme is present throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, trying on makeup for the first time, kissing a boy for the first time, yeah. getting her period, um, you know, losing a loved one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's just a, it's all things that sort of graduate you to adulthood. Yeah. It was it was a beautiful coming of age story for a girl. Sure. You know. I think it's beautiful. I do too. Even though I'm not a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the makeup. Yeah. Section. Um, when Jamie Lee Curtis grabs the little, uh, like one tissue of toilet paper. Mm-hmm. And has Anna Klumsky blot her lips? Mm-hmm. To this day, that is exactly how I blot my lipstick. Because of this movie? Probably. <laughs> it seemed like a very old school. I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah. Like a very old timey mm-hmm. way of doing it. Yeah. How else would you do it? It makes the lipstick last longer. Okay. How else would you do it, though? A Kleenex. Like using Wait, actual... how did they do it? She ripped off a piece of toilet paper. That's essentially Kleenex. Mm, yeah. A little bit different in texture. Oh. But... Okay. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis, who I loved in this, mm-hmm. um, I had mentioned when she came on screen, I was like, it's weird looking at her, not because she's younger, but mm-hmm. because her hair was long. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like we've seen her with short hair for so long now. Yeah. Like that's been such a, I feel like since True Lies, she's always had short hair or something. Well, even in one of the first movies, I think it was the first movie she did with Dan Aykroyd. Trading, Trading Places. She did have short hair, mm-hmm. but she wore wigs in that. True. And that was, but that her was natural of, hair was yeah. short. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But yes, it's been a long time. But like when I think of trading places, I don't think of her with short hair. I, oh. I think of her with wigs on. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. Maybe because she's like, I think maybe the artwork of her on the posters and covers and stuff. I think yeah. she has long, like the yeah. wigs on. Mm-hmm. Um, she's great in this. She's fantastic. Perfect casting for her with her in it. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting. Mm-hmm. She uh, instituted a swear jar on set. <laughs> And uh, Dan Aykroyd referred to it as trucker talk. Um, and they would have different dollar amounts for different words. Wow. So $5, $10, whatever. And apparently, so what they did is they gave the kids the money at the end of the oh. shoot. And supposedly the kids had thousands of dollars. <laughs> I was going to say, is that what the cookie jar actually was? It was maybe. The I don't jar? know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Because I, I can only imagine that, like, you know, not just the actors, but all of the Teamsters and crew members and stuff. And so. Yeah. Artists, artists are they talk like sailors. Yeah, <laughs> so they do. Sailors, they really sailors do. probably don't really talk like that. Mm, I bet I've I... never heard Popeye say "fuck." <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'll bet when what kind of sailors are we talking Robin about? When Robin Williams played Popeye, I bet there was lots of swearing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he probably. <laughs> but probably not when he played on the hook and there were as lots of sailors in that. I don't know. There's there's supposedly an NC-17 version of Mrs. Doubtfire. Well, yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire is different. That's problematic anyway, so. Yeah, well. So stalkery. <laughs> it is. It's. There, anyway, are, there are lots of laws that were would have been considered broken from that. Yeah. Um, but yes, anyway. Um, 
Jamie Lee Curtis, fantastic. I also really liked that they showed her having a real interest in Harry. Mm-hmm. Um, in a lot of a lot of other movies, it's like the guy is pursuing her, yeah. and it's like, yeah, she she says yes, and she's into it or whatever, and so it's okay. Mm-hmm. But like in this, like because he's her boss and all that stuff, there's like especially nowadays, it seems like it would be easy to muddy those waters. Yeah, and they made mm-hmm. a point of showing not only that was she sort of pursuing him a little bit, but that she was hoping for very like with her facial expressions that she was hoping for him to respond in a specific way and that right. she, she wanted him to ask her out and so I really yeah. liked that it was very like sweet and um and that it was very even sided yeah. it's interesting when he when she first shows up and he's like oh I you know looking at how she wasn't super provocatively dressed in no. my mind but for the time she probably was more provocative than what he sees. Yeah, um, for sure. And you could tell that he was attracted to her, but trying to be like appropriate about it. Yeah, like it kind He's of reminded me of my dad. Like, oh, oh, well, there, I mean, she's very attractive, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm proper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a point I took a note. I'm like, this relationship is problematic, but I think because you know. Yeah. He's her boss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it happens. And it happened to her twice. Did it happen? Oh, my God. It happened to her twice. The guy who owned the <gasps> salon that she previously worked at was her husband, ex-husband. Huh. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. She's got a thing for bosses. She does have a thing for bosses. Hmm. But the fact that she was really the one that was pursuing yeah. him. She was sort of like... She wasn't exactly pursuing. She was giving him the giving him signs that it was okay to pursue her. Mm-hmm. Is what I felt like. Yeah. And then when he did that smile, when she has her back to him, that smile, and I was like, I really like that they played this sweetly and that they let the audience know that she is into this from the beginning. Yeah, this isn't a shock to her. It's not a surprise to her. Yeah, and and she's not like she's also not like a sultry vixen who's like trying to cast a spell on him either like you know they could have easily done that and that would have like given veda a little bit of um justice for what she was doing but Mm -hmm. um but they didn't do it that way and i really i'm really really happy with how they did it yeah i agree and and she really stepped into the role of like mothering veda but not in like an overbearing yeah she was like i want to be your friend yeah which like my mom and i are friends so i guess that's why i connect the two she genuinely just wanted to help the girl yeah Yeah. from the beginning even before she was with harry yeah like she 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 raised the question that maybe something's not not okay with her yes so yeah and that's just what she needed yeah it's just what veda needed um the b incident Mm -hmm. you want to talk about the b incident do you have any do you have more notes i don't see your phone no (laughs) um so you had mentioned during the, we were, you were like, that's a hornet's nest. That is a hornet's a, nest. A good eye. Um, so they made a mistake and put a hornet's nest. They, they made a hornet's nest. <laughs> uh, but there were bees. They, yeah. They, the, 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 the critter was a bee. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple things I thought was interesting in the movie. Um, they definitely, heavy on the foreshadowing. Oh, yeah. Um, they bring in the little coffin that he ends up in later. Yeah. Um, the dead fish. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And then... Um, uh, he is allergic to everything. They make a point of saying he's allergic to everything. Yeah. And then when they first encounter the bees, he says, run for your life. Yeah. And he doesn't run the second time. So he loses his life. It's, yeah. Heartbreak. But yeah, they were real heavy on the foreshadowing, but I was kind of like, okay with it. You know? Yeah. I'm like, that they, I like that they did the work, you know, they did the storytelling work. Yeah. Even if it's a little on, on the nose. Um, yeah. Um, the, the bee scene, mm-hmm. Macaulay Culkin did. And it's real bees, because they couldn't do CG. It wasn't good enough at the time. Um, so yeah, they did. They did he really get stung? Uh, I I don't know that they did. Whether I mean, he got stung, he, I was he wasn't he like actually attacking a, the beehive. No, he, if you see his hands are just kind of raised, and he's just kind of like lightly moving his hands around, like yeah. ah, um, I'm doing that, even though the people listening can't see. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you know, he wasn't like swatting at the bees, like trying mm-hmm. to make the bees angry. You know, yeah. Um, because bees don't want to sting you. No. I think they probably had docile bees or something. These are our most docile bees. Mm, good vintage. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this, is our, 
It's a good vintage of docile bees. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they maybe they smoked them ahead of time or something, yeah. so they were like a little like mm-hmm. hazy, you know, out of yeah. it. Um, but yeah, uh, I just I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I don't have a lot of other notes. Um, I did read a book that I thought this movie is based on the book, but I couldn't find any information about that book. It sounds hmm. like there was a My Girl book. Interesting. That maybe they did, I'm guessing, after. Hmm. Um, if they did it before, then they definitely borrowed from this other book that I read when I was younger. Hmm. Um, but uh, in the My Girl book, um, sadly, she knocks the fishbowl over when she finds out about Thomas J. out of anger. Um, and then they, they decided not, they didn't do that in this, obviously. Um, but the book that I had written, 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 written read <laughs> when I was a child was um, a book by, I think it's Doris Buchanan, called The Taste of Blackberries. And it's about two friends in the summertime going out and, you know, doing kid things. They oh. find um, some bees and one gets stung and dies from the, the bee stings. So it's a, it's a pretty short, wow. short, short little book. Um, the Taste of Blackberries. The Taste of Blackberries. I'm going to add that to my list. Yeah. And I think I read that when I was really young. I, I, I want to say I was eight or younger when I read that for the first really? time. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was a, I was a big reader when I was really little. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But the I was Veda. <laughs> I was like yes. precocious and bothering adults. That well, were you part of and... Book It as well? I Getting don't know. Getting some free pizza at Pizza Hut? No, but I love that Pizza Hut still does it. Do they really? Oh, yeah. If you if you do, um, if you go on the Pizza Hut website, I'm going to, Pizza Hut, sponsor us. <laughs> Please. Um, <laughs> you can, there, if you go into deals and look at all the different coupon deals that they have, they always have a book at bundle of, of things where it's like a couple dollars of your purchase goes towards the book at program. And then you also get like pizza breadsticks and a pop or something like that. Cool. Or, or soda, depending on where you're from. <laughs> soda pop. <laughs> Do you say pop or soda? Cola? I say soda. Soda. Did you ever say pop? Because you were in Chicago, right? I that would have been say, a pop. I did say pop for a little bit. It's a very Midwestern. It is. But I kind of, I just, I don't know. When I was in high school, I changed to saying soda. Yeah. To be different. I think when I was a kid, it was pop. Mm-hmm. And then we moved and then people thought that was weird. Yeah. So it became soda. Mm-hmm. But in, especially now, mm-hmm. like in Texas and Oklahoma. They call it Coke. Everything is Coke. Mm-hmm. What kind of Coke do you want? Yeah. Sprite. <laughs> right. Seven up. When I was in when I was in London, I asked for a soda and they gave, I was like, do you have any soda? And they're like, yeah. And they walked away and I was like, oh, okay. And they Brody brought me soda, soda water. water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, when, when I was in Europe, it was water s- sparkling or still mm-hmm. or fizzy or still. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Germany, mit or mit aus gas. Oh, with or without gas. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll leave soda talk for for now. <laughs> she takes a drink. Um, I, I'm just checking my notes one more time. Oh, uh, I do have one last note uh, on on this film. In um, the UK or in England, the British Board of Film Classification insisted that the film carry a warning to children um, because of the Blood Brothers scene. Huh. Warning kids about infections like HIV. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, kind of cool that they did that. Yes. So. So, yeah. Wow. I remember that part always grossed me out. I'm like, ew, why would you do that? Yeah. Which, interestingly enough, um, the guy that played Justin, we had mentioned this when we talked about this, Mm -hmm. um, three years after this movie came out, Mm -hmm. died from AIDS related pneumonia. So, yeah. um, so it's interesting that there was like a, a warning in England about it. Yeah. Not here because, you know, people don't want to talk about it here. Right. If we ignore it, it'll go away. <laughs> or, or just joke about it. It was, that was an era of like Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. Let's joke about it. Yep. Um, which I, you know, gallows humor I get, but. Man. You know. Too far. Yeah. And, and when, if there's, nothing being or not enough being done about it Mm -hmm. and then you're joking about it too then that's problematic right if there's a lot being done about it and it's like really socially you know people are socially conscious about it Mm -hmm. then joking you know okay yeah because we're trying but they weren't trying hard enough back then interesting you know when you said that they put out a warning i was like is it because there's lots of death in this movie oh yeah (laughs) yeah there's Uh, it's i was what this came out in 91 
Yeah. I was very small. <laughs> yeah. And was not expecting to watch something where children were dying. Mm -hmm. That was sort of a newer concept for me. Yeah. Because I, I knew that children got taken away. Like, mm -hmm. there were lots of abductions when I was a kid, but I didn't consider that children could also die. Yeah. And that was super traumatic for me. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I still remember sitting right outside of the... Uh, the theater that we just walked out of and sitting on the bench unconsolable because I'm just sobbing and I'm like, mm. but why does that happen? That's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to die when you're old. And yeah. like, it was, then we had lots of conversations you about death. I was, oh God. <laughs> that was the conversation that she didn't have with yeah. the dad was she asked the question about, mm -hmm. is that, is that for a child? And he's like, no, it's just for short people. Right. And it's like, they're avoiding letting her understand that kids also die. Yeah. Man. Which did her a disservice. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And they talk about that in the movie, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. yeah. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. So really would you recommend it to people? I would 100% recommend it to people. Is there anybody movie. you wouldn't recommend it to? No. Yeah, it's pretty good. No. It's a pretty good solid film. Yeah. Very happy with it. Um, you know what? I, I, I want to look up real quick. Who directed this movie? It was uh, the same guy who directed a, the, a very Brady movie. Which they talk about the Brady Bunch in the film. <gasps> they do. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go run away and live with the Brady Bunch, but they have Zeif. too many kids, so you have to go live with the Partridge family. <laughs> Howard Zeef, he also did My Girl 2, mm -hmm. which was his last film he directed. <gasps> Howard Zeef died in 2009. Wow. Why was that his last movie he directed? 94. Huh. The Dream Team, Private Benjamin, the main event. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay bunch of Volkswagen commercials. <laughs> Interesting. My only gripe with My Girl 2 was that they cast a different woman to play Veda's mom. Oh, they didn't bring Jamie Lee Curtis back? No, Veda's mom. Oh, but, but you hardly see her. You only see I an know, old photo I know, but it's a picture, and then the woman they cast looks nothing like her. What do they do, like flashbacks or something? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I saw My Girl 2. She's in California, right? Yeah. Um, My Girl 2 by the way, is the reason why when I first came to visit L.A., I was like, can we go visit the tar pits? Because Veda went to go visit the tar pits. Oh. And there was a whole thing about the mood ring where the friend that she meets pretends to throw the mood ring into the tar oh pit. Oh, my God. And she loses her damn mind because... Yeah, I don't remember this movie at all. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. But I really loved... I really loved the whole My Girl. Oh, man. If only we if only I had known, we could have done My Girl, My Girl 2 oh, that damn. double feature. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're not going back now. It's all right. We can never go but they cast a woman with short blonde hair to play her mom. Oh, interesting. And in that photo, her mom had, did, like, mousy long hair. Do they take the photo in the... No. Well, maybe she cut her hair in between the photo and... Okay, that's why you, why you Why are you trying to... Why are you trying to sully the good name of my girl, too? <laughs> <laughs> with your nitpicking ways. <laughs> um. Okay. I, I don't have anything else for this episode, do you? I love it. We should watch it again. Uh, we're not watching it. <laughs> All right. Until next time, everyone. Bon cinema.